Um, also, uh, I would like to uh, thank um, uh, Jose Laje, who used to sit there, but um, uh, who obviously um, helped uh, uh, through NSF the, uh, the, uh, this particular workshop and designed it. And also, uh, Silvio Lorante, who I understand was uh, very much a counsel to, uh, to, uh, to the brains that put this uh, workshop together. Um, <clears throat> I also want to apologize to um, uh, those whose lectures I missed uh, last uh, afternoon because I was actually working uh, at the Franklin Institute, uh, Dr. Exane Samei, um, and um, um, my good friend uh, Jim Martin. Are you here, Jim? Okay, super. And then uh, Jordan Charles uh, uh, also. Sorry about that. Uh, fortunately, I, uh, I have a pretty good idea of what uh, you presented. So that's why I am, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <coughs> all right. And um, what am I doing? Oh. So um, my, uh, my, the, the presentation that I have for you is extremely fresh. In fact, I just uh, loaded it because um, I was surprised by the um, by the diversity and novelty of um, most of the um, images that were put on the screen. I thought I knew everything about this field, but <laughs> I'm always proven wrong. So uh, I did not practice it, that's what I'm trying to say. The, um, you know the title. Uh, you've seen this, uh, this statement uh, many times, uh, but uh, let me uh, uh, stress the fact that uh, uh, a law of physics is uh, not a mantra. This is not uh, something to, uh, to repeat the same way forever. And uh, this is a morphing idea. Uh, with time, we get wise or wiser. And, um, and also, I think it's wise not to uh, take ourselves too seriously or not to buy our own material, OK? It's just an idea of uh, how uh, this big tent uh, looks. And um, <coughs> the, the field uh, has. Uh, grown in many ways, which can be measured. Uh, uh, Jerry Jones mentioned uh, 5,000, uh, well, uh, you said uh, citations. There are actually uh, uh, titles or publications. The citations are uh, 50,000. Uh, but a pretty big number, 50, is the number of books published in, uh, I wrote only five, but this one uh, with uh, Silvio Ranta, but they're listed chronologically. <coughs> the books written by others are uh, much more numerous. But I picked um, only five to show you that uh, to this point, <coughs> the World Cup is uh, being won, has been won most uh, frequently by France. The first uh, three appeared in France, this one in Brazil, and this one in Italy. So those of you in the audience who feel uh, left out, uh, you have uh, uh, some, uh, let's say, harder training to do. Um, the future directions, which is actually my, uh, the, my charge for this presentation, are fairly obvious. Uh, they were uh, um, uh, traced, outlined by the previous speakers. They have to do with the fundamentals, animal design, a key word, uh, animal design, uh, medicine, uh, which means uh, doing engineering on, uh, on the uh, car that's running and rolling on the highway, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> meaning <laughs> It's a lot more difficult to do uh, medical engineering than to do uh, uh, the other kind of engineering. Uh, aerospace, um, infrastructure, water, the city, security, uh, military um, uh, concerns, all the way to uh, warfare, uh, heat exchanger, microfluid. You can read the list. Uh, and electronic schooling. Uh, industrial applications galore, because in, from each uh, of the previous uh, bullets, you can imagine uh, usefulness and all the way to opportunities for making money. And then uh, there is another thing. And the other thing is uh, the last slide I'm going to show you. All right, let's see what I came up with next. Yeah, and uh, you may have seen this uh, drawing before. It has to do with... Uh, uh, the, uh, the times we've been living in. Um, here is uh, uh, no, Sadiq Arnaud, uh, 200 years ago, and today is over here. When I uh, published my first book in 1982, 
uh, I drew this, uh, this uh, uh, flow of ideas uh, up to this point. Uh, I, was, uh, I observed as a student first that uh, the science of heat transfer or heat transmission is uh, nothing, uh, nothing more than the lost child of uh, caloric theory. Uh, people poo-poo caloric theory. They, uh, they claim that it was uh, buried, uh, meaning first killed and then buried uh, because of uh, thermodynamics. It's, of course, nonsense. The caloric, th caloric theory is, <laughs> is alive today. Uh, quite often, it is uh, misspoken. People talk about uh, uh, calorimetry uh, shamelessly. Well, that comes from a caloric theory. They talk about thermometry shamelessly. It, that comes from caloric theory. People talk about thermal energy. <laughs> Nonsense. There's only one energy. Um, that comes from caloric theory. Um, you see? And uh, the terminology of caloric theory is heat transfer. And it occurred to me that um, uh, the lost child needs to be uh, brought back home under the, the bigger tent. And that has happened uh, uh, from uh, 1982 onward. The other thing that uh, occurred to me, I can, if you ask me, I can tell you stories about um, uh, how I came up with this uh, uh, next uh, event of confluence, uh, to the point that today there are um, uh, three uh, laws uh, worth uh, contemplating and then uh, putting to use. In the afternoon, I will be focusing on thermodynamics according to its uh, current state. The, um, the next slides, <laughs> why my presentation is uh, unrehearsed, are uh, inspired by uh, two things, uh, a constant conversation with uh, my current PhD student, you meet uh, Yunesh at the back, uh, raise your hand, you meet. Um, is uh, really uh, great fun to meet, but uh, you meet is his name. So, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and he helped me greatly with this. And uh, spontaneously, uh, I was inspired by uh, uh, Silvia Orantes' presentation yesterday. Uh, she chose to begin with the beginning, you see. And it occurred to me that, first of all, that was very clever. Um, in fact, uh, a few months ago, she reminded me of this paper in 1996 in which all the important things were written down already. Uh, but so much time has passed since then that I, I kind of forgot uh, that uh, in the beginning, uh, the whole thing was pretty well defined. Um, so I thought of, uh, of um, acknowledging some of the uh, 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 wonderful people in the audience by uh, showing uh, images of uh, their own drawings. So here we have uh, from uh, uh, Shiva Ziai, Shiva here, uh, from a paper we did with Silvio Oranta, uh, evolution. Now look, uh, uh, this is, uh, these are plumes. Think of them as smoke, like above a, uh, a brush fire. The smoke <laughs> depends on uh, is, what is burning, could be, as in this case, a curtain, curtain of smoke. Or it could be somebody's uh, bonfire. This uh, thing, meaning the fire itself, is quite different. It's basically a point source. Um, this one is a um, very flat uh, source. But the uh, design in nature is such, well, I mean, why design in nature is really a wonderful subject it is that from a distance, that is uh, with eyes uh, squinting, uh, the drawings are all the same. The diversity is effaced. From a distance, all plumes look the same. Uh, they are actually meandering. They, uh, they look like some, these days you, some people show you, uh, say these uh, weather channel people, the way the big rivers of the globe are actually meandering over the centuries. Here you see meandering uh, rivers of smoke, um, meandering with a particular wavelength. And even though their, their birth is uh, quite different. And that means that if you imagine uh, riding upward on a, um, on a tiny balloon through this uh, uh, buoyant jet, what was originally a jet with flat cross-section eventually becomes 
uh, the jet with the time average around cross-section everywhere and every time. Any cross-section, meaning the jet itself, uh, evolves into being, in a time average sense, a round jet. Never the other way around. You see here the, uh, the unidirectionality of evolution. Evolution means the, uh, the changing drawing, in this case the cross-section, over time, which has, uh, over time, a direction that's uh, discernible in the mind of the observer. Science is about us. Science is uh, what we uh, say of these things that uh, are everywhere that uh, impress, impress us. Science is not something you dig somewhere uh, in the backyard with a shovel. It is, it belongs to the individual. And so does the language. Uh, take this word. Uh, evolution uh, was not invented as a word by uh, biologists. This comes from uh, Latin. It's as old as anything in uh, Western civilization. Evolvo, evolvere means to roll out, to roll forth. Um, it uh, makes me think, because I was raised in such a language, uh, it makes me think of what happens during uh, childbirth. And it's for that reason that uh, after <laughs> evolvo evolvere, what, uh, what uh, is, is, uh, is birth. Uh, and she who g gives birth to everything in Latin is natura, or nature. The Greek name for nature is uh, uh, physis, which means physics in, uh, in uh, English. So that's basically the, uh, the territory and also the language in, it, in which it is described. Uh, the, the beginning of the beginning was my first year as a professor. I was at the University of Colorado. And um, I, I know you, you think that uh, my bag is thermodynamics uh, and heat transfer. Uh, the uh, the uh, work in the kitchen, meaning I was, uh, when I was an undergraduate, was uh, in fact uh, about many other disciplines. And one with which I fell in love was the strength of materials. Strength of materials uh, took shape um, in the same place that caloric theory took, took shape, which was France, in the same place where applied the mathematics took shape, France, 200 years ago. And, um, and the, uh, one of the things in, uh, never mind the fact that the buckling of elastic columns was done by Euler next door, but the real, uh, you know, publishing and discussing of that was in the French Academy of Sciences. And if you have an um, elastic column that is in the axial compression, the elastic column is uh, now in thermodynamics terms a, um, a uh, body uh, that is free of irreversibility. Uh, in mechanics, they call it a conservative system. That's what elastic means, meaning you compress it, it uh, can uh, push you back. And the work, you did, the work you did on compressing is given back to you, OK? It occurred to me that uh, if I imagine a control volume around uh, that uh, buoyant plume, then uh, obviously uh, what uh, exits uh, the plume is a uh, reaction force. Uh, what enters the plume is an impact force. So my control volume in fluid mechanics is, in fact, a column, which is uh, conservative in axial compression, therefore it must be, it must have the property of buckling with a wavelength that I can calculate. And uh, the surprise to me back then was that the uh, wavelength that I calculated was exactly the, um, in my head, because I was educated also in fluid mechanics, exactly the wavelength of uh, the so-called uh, uh, most unstable disturbance in uh, the hydrodynamic theory of, uh, of inviscid uh, fluid flow. And I published this uh, buckling theory of the origin of turbulence. And my colleagues there thought, uh, and elsewhere, thought that I was uh, crazy. And um, it's a little bit like uh, the Greek who discovered uh, the existence of irrational numbers. They thought he was crazy, uh, the people who believed only in uh, rational numbers. And uh, they decided to take him out uh, to sea in a boat and drown him. Yeah. <laughs> That, that happened to the, uh, to the Greek. In my case, I, I fought back uh, right away because I knew the history of uh, geometry. 
Yeah, four right back. With the, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, back then I didn't know how to swim, by the way. <laughs> So then, uh, fortunately, I was surrounded by, uh, by uh, equally crazy students. So uh, one of them is here, uh, Mike Stockman. Raise your hand. So Mike uh, uh, went into the lab. This was his master's thesis. And I photographed extremely fast, extremely fast liquid jets uh, shot through the air, like uh, I exaggerate, from this end to the end of the room and photographed with a high-speed camera. and. Um, uh, I, uh, I did something to something such that his photographs would appear exactly like uh, what I had published, you see. Uh, but here we have an example of what, um, what theory means and what experiment means. Uh, theory is something you do uh, based on a mental flash. Experiment is something that honest scientist does when he has an idea to test. To do experiment without an idea to investigate is nonsense. To do an experiment to generate data is nonsense. It is useless. Those who really make progress are those who have ideas that justify the empirical work. And we published um, <coughs> this kind of work and uh, then uh, the um, People around, meaning the peers, uh, decided, decided to take uh, to prepare the boat, the boat for the. And then, uh, fortunately, at the same time, I had a doctoral student, um, Ren Anderson, also here. Raise your hand, Ren. Who said uh, we can uh, prove uh, these <laughs> skeptics wrong by uh, taking this so-called plume, meaning a jet, running to a, a highly flexible hose, uh, uh, buried <laughs> at the bottom of a bathtub. So this is a bathtub uh, with a black tarp and the water running through the hose. Uh, and I said uh, to uh, Ren, I'm sorry, but I, we cannot find a hose that's flexible enough to show uh, what, what they we're expecting to see, which would be the meandering of this uh, uh, big river over the uh, centuries. And he said, no problem. We'll just uh, glue together some condoms. So, <laughs> so. So this is, uh, this is his experimental work. And we published that as well. It was constructive design. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and uh And they started to push the boat into the water at this, at this stage. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and of course, I, I nearly panicked. But fortunately, at the same time, I had another PhD student, uh, Shigeo Kimura. Where is Shigeo? Terrible. Shigeo is uh, from Japan, so uh, he did both uh, master's degree and PhD w with our group uh, at Universal Colorado. And uh, Shigeo, this is uh, at the bottom of a uh, 10 meter tall ladder. So Shigeo is up where in the black uh, invisible, and he would drop a toilet paper. This is toilet paper, and uh, the rest of us would take uh, high speed uh, camera photographs. And what is uh, buckling here is the same uh, phenomenon as on the previous slide, is the air jet. Air jet entrained by the, uh, by the um, falling toilet paper. The toilet paper is basically uh, as flexible as, as anything. The toilet paper visualizes the shape of, uh, which is macroscopic, of the uh, meandering flow system. You, al you also see a visualization of how how uh, downstream, uh, in this case, you see a wake, is, uh, has gotten wider. I um, only, while making this slide, I realized how much uh, my own thinking was influenced by this uh, photograph. I started to make drawings of boundary layer flow. This is natural convection on a vertical wall. Unlike my professors, uh, think about your own education in uh, fluid mechanics. People draw boundary layers as uh, smoothly getting uh, thicker and thicker. No. Fluid flow has macroscopic outlook. It has, um, um, in the fluid mechanics back then, it was called um, large-scale structure, uh, which is, in fact, this, uh, this uh, meandering uh, shape with a wavelength that seems to increase with the thickness of the stream. In natural convection, in forced convection, 
And the reason for the existence of a transition is, uh, this is also from my first publication, is the, uh, is the clash between two ways in which the jet could thicken itself. The jet thickens itself by mixing with the surroundings. And one is to become thicker and thicker through rubbing, which means viscous diffusion. That is for the uh, thickness called D to uh, increase according to this uh, uh, time to the power one half, or to increase by rolling, which means to increase uh, proportionally with the time, meaning time to power one. And then without uh, seeking permission from anybody, I said, listen, Adrian, um, if there are two ways to, to um, become thicker, which means to mix with the ambient, then obviously, given a chance, the fast will uh, mix with the slow the faster way, because the, what's moving is free, free to choose. And that meant to begin uh, uh, with the viscous diffusion and then sharply transition to rolling. Rolling means a, a different kind of mixing, a mixing in gulps where most of the gulps are inviscid. And here in uh, one slide we have the origin of turbulence. In other words, uh, beginning with uh, 1980, 1980 when I published this, uh, turbulence, at least in my mind, was no, lo no longer a mystery. Well, it is still a mystery if you read the fluid mechanics today because such is the science. Science is, uh, is um, a, uh, a, uh, a way to think that uh, uh, is, in fact, endowed with huge inertia, inertia that uh, is measured in the passing of several generations, so I'm not at all uh, uh, losing uh, 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 hope that there will be a change in the way people think. On the other hand, I'm not uh, that interested in, uh, in, uh, in observing because I won't be around when that happens. So uh, here we go. So that's Shigeo Kimura. Let's see who else. Uh, by the way, before I talk about this, you may have seen this uh, slide uh, yesterday, I assume. Um, I, uh, it also occurred to me as I was putting these slides together that uh, I um, I seem uh, to have been uh, befriended by people who know how to make drawings. Uh, I'm one of them, but uh, the people who uh, uh, have not run away from me are actually very good at making drawings. So this uh, drawing was made by uh, uh, Jim Marden. Uh, I won't describe it. The, um, the title of the slide is Tongue in Cheek, because that's what animal motion is, uh, without uh, meaning animals are in fact bodies of water with uh, motor inside, all right? Um, and, um, but I had the great fortune of uh, meeting uh, Jim Martin at a um, uh, highly select uh, conference of biologists in uh, Switzerland in uh, 2004, organized by uh, Professor Ewald Weibel. And the title of the conference was uh, Animal Design. Uh, I come from engineering. Uh, I have no, I'm very much, uh, uh, I don't even question that title. But one year before the, uh, this conference in Switzerland, uh, I, had, I was a keynote speaker at a Gordon conference on thermodynamics. And I took that as an opportunity to tell the audience about the constructor law and how it uh, illuminates the design in nature. And a professor of physics from a Hebrew University in Jerusalem uh, told me basically to get off the stage because the word design has no place in physics. And I was uh, very surprised by that. Uh, I was not scared because I, I was raised under communism, so I know, uh, <laughs> I, know <laughs> I know how serious this sort of order can be. And I knew that uh, the Goran Congress, I really did not have to get off the stage. But anyway, so here is the biologist, the biologist, who they invited me to, uh, to, to talk. And the title of the conference is, in fact, uh, written in my language. So that event was extremely liberating, and it is, uh, Jim Martin is, in fact, uniquely responsible for um, opening my eyes to, uh, to the possibility that what I was uh, considering to be intuitively correct is, in fact, uh, uh, not a, uh, an unusual idea. It is something that uh, many people in science uh, are um, comfortable with. 
And here in uh, Switzerland, the entire audience, all the speakers, in fact, were uh, at ease with uh, this sort of thinking. So uh, that was uh, worth uh, putting in this uh, small collection of images. So with apologies to those um, uh, friends and former students whose uh, work is not illustrated, here we have um, the, uh, <laughs> the birth, again, from uh, a mental viewing of a vasculature as a flow architecture. I won't describe these things. These were made by, um, by uh, Marcelo Herrera, the ones in color. Uh, this is a uh, animal organ uh, that belongs to, <laughs> belongs to Samuel Kim. He made it. <laughs> He'll tell you what organ that is. But Sanwu uh, Kim, in a paper with uh, Sevilla Rant, also made this drawing. Uh, this drawing is uh, so good. I'm telling you, so good that it was taken by others and published as their own uh, <laughs> more than once in the, in the, in the much more recent uh, literature in a country I will not mention, mention by name. Um, and so uh, thank you, both of you, for, for, for this. Uh, here is another, another, um, another image with uh, drawings and uh, wonderful memories. Um, at Duke, uh, Sylvia and I de developed a course called Design, uh, sorry, uh, Constructal Theory and Design. At the end of the, um, the course, the students uh, put together a paper. About eight years ago, a student uh, 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 put together this uh, uh, assembly, assembly of uh, pyramid shapes from Egypt all the way to Central America. And uh, that was a very nice uh, empirical uh, paper that um, made, uh, made me think of, uh, gee, why are these uh, triangles uh, the same? And with another friend who could not be here today, um, uh, Stéphane Perrin, who is a uh, computer scientist working in Paris, we came up with a the, uh, with the prediction, in retrospect, that um, all these things should be the same because uh, to make a uh, pile of uh, dry stones, with the minimal effort, you have to, uh, to uh, reach a balance between uh, sliding, which is uh, easy, and uh, lifting stones up an incline, which is more difficult. In other words, the path uh, traced by one stone is a refracted path of a particular angle. And that angle has to do with uh, the discrepancy between uh, something like friction coefficient on the horizontal versus friction coefficient on the incline. Uh, why I, um, I, uh, I laughed at myself is that this, this was actually on the back of, the, of an envelope, all this. That is on the back of an envelope if uh, you're raised uh, as we were, where we come from. Uh, Georgi Georgiev comes from Bulgaria. We are raised uh, uh, really, really uh, uh, seriously in mathematics. Uh, if you know trigonometry, then you can do this on the back of an envelope, okay, um, with a sharply uh, pointed uh, pencil. And uh, I was laughing. I said, Adrian, this is amazing. As kids, we grew up uh, fascinated by all sorts of theories that, um, that uh, Egyptians got into boats looking for Atlantis, and they ended up in Central America and taught, uh, taught uh, the uh, indigenous how to build pyramids. <laughs> There were such books when we were growing up. And uh, no, that's not what happened. <laughs> uh, making uh, piles of stone intelligently, meaning without killing yourself, was in every, obviously by now, civilized human being because the, the original inhabitants of the Americas came from Asia, Central Asia, and they were as, uh, let's say, equipped as the other people of Eurasia who were uh, who um, essentially were doing the same thing. By the way, pyramids were built, uh, meaning uh, archaeology shows for the first time in, uh, in uh, today's Normandy in France, okay? Or is it Bretagne? Correct me. Anyway, somewhere like in a place like that. So it's called uh, uh, dry stone uh, construction, or pierre sèche. That's the name for, uh, for constructing uh, all the way to the edifices of... Uh, of uh, today, uh, the Near East, uh, before the invention, invention of cement, 
and uh, the, um, the fired brick. So pretty cool, meaning a slide with drawings. Let's see what next. Uh, Sylvia and I and uh, Jadal Lee, who could not be here today, um, did the, the pyramid story one, uh, one time or three times better by predicting the entire architecture of vegetation from uh, root to trunk to canopy to the forest itself. The uh, forest will be on one of my slides in the afternoon. Uh, along the way, we discovered why uh, the great engineer FL uh, built uh, this, uh, the Eiffel Tower, which is in fact uh, uh, a constructal, uh, meaning uh, the tree of nature without a canopy. In other words, the Eiffel Tower is not a uh, pile of dry stones, uh, slender, or sorry, it's built like this in order to be strong in compression. No, it is shaped this way <laughs> to be strong in bending because from over here, from the Atlantic, in principle, there could be hurricane uh, level winds. And all right, so one discovery after another discovery, all for fun. I also had um, fun of figuring out uh, why uh, business cards uh, look this way. The cinema screen looks that way. The computer screen looks that way. The so-called uh, golden ratio rectangle is the page that the two human eyes can scan the fastest. Why the fastest? I said earlier, about an hour ago, so that the human and machine specimen could, uh, could uh, get it, meaning grasp the message of the image and move on uh, out of dangerous way. Uh, never mind that, that specimen. My cat would like to, uh, to do the same, and she does, and she's capable because her eyes are also two and uh, oriented on the horizontal. In other words, the field of vision is this. And this this way, meaning longer on the horizontal than on the vertical because, spread the word, the world is flat. Yeah. If it were not flat, then each of us would have about 10 eyes um, organized on, a, uh, on, a, uh, on an arc over a circle, you see. Yeah. Tell your university uh, dean and president that the world is flat. Uh, okay, and that's uh, almost the end of my, uh, don't leave yet. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, Sylvie in her talk uh, showed you uh, uh, how to predict the, uh, the, um, the S-curve of anything that spreads or anything that's being collected from area to point or from point to area. Uh, here, meaning S-curve uh, means uh, spreading uh, slow, then fast, and slow again. This is uh, uh, Brewer's East, Brewer's East, uh, meaning a population of uh, very many uh, small things. Uh, I have a uh, flashback of a little kid um, in um, where I come from. Again, uh, Georgi, correct me. They teach. Uh, in this case, zoology uh, early on, fifth grade, okay. So think about it in this country. Okay, so in, um, I had fun with that uh, thing about the Brewer's East, which was one of the lessons. I know, I still remember the, uh, the Latin name for, uh, for it, Latin in the church Latin, uh, Saharo Mitches Cerevisie. It is as early as in fifth grade that I knew why um, these other, uh, Latin speakers were, were referring to beer as a cerveza, you know, it's because of this uh, name of this particular being in Latin. Okay, that's S-curve in uh, living things, S-curve in other living things, namely the human and machine specimen equipped with a portable radio. And even uh, more potent is the human and machine specimen equipped with a TV. Uh, those numbers rose in S-curve fashion. And, and by the way, the, uh, the latecomer also has portable radio. An even more potent, potent uh, human and machine specimen is the one who is equipped with one of my papers. This, yes, this is the citations, meaning the people using one of my papers. This person also has a TV and a radio. 
you see? That's, that's evolution uh, from left to right. Um, what works is kept. And uh, by the way, I have other papers with S-curves. As you can tell this joke further, but uh, you, <laughs> telling one joke three times is enough. Uh, and at the same time on the vertical, you have the S-curve phenomenon. Um, I skip over that. Sylvie showed how to predict the S-curve on the back of an envelope uh, as a uh, tandem of two ways to invade needle or finger invasion followed by a thickening of the finger called consolidation. Think of this as a military invasion of a territory. You invade this way, not this way first. First this way, later that way. And uh, hey, if, if you can do it on the back of the envelope, where is the construct the law? The construct the law is here. Um, the question is, uh, can this uh, covering of the territory be uh, faster? Can the S be steeper? Yes, it can be steeper if the invasion, um, uh, call it uh, plan, uh, is uh, better and better. Or in this case, it looks uh, more complex, but not that complex. Uh, that's for spreading, but also for collecting. Those of you who like the history of technology may remember that actually in these parts in Pennsylvania, the first oil wells were uh, needle-like and vertical. And that sort of uh, oil extraction technology reached its, uh, the plateau of its S uh, curve early. So the oil fields went dead. Then the drilling technology came up with, uh, with uh, horizontal drilling, which also reached its S curve plateau and died. And only recently, this is the way oil is extracted in the empty core of uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, they call it the fishbone design. Obviously, it's constructal. And uh, people are asking, you know, is this principle being used in, uh, by real people? Uh, well, it is being used, except that it's being used unwittingly. Now, the, uh, the law of physics justifies the uh, evolution of the human machine specimen that, uh, that uh, thrives on the basis of such knowledge or technology. So that's the uh, constructor law in, uh, in action. And the phenomena are innumerable in, uh, in the civilized uh, uh, world. And speaking of the S-curve of uh, spreading, obviously we have uh, those of us who have been active in the field know already uh, who we are because we tend to show up uh, um, almost every year at the Construct the Law conferences, um, most recently, finally, once in uh, Romania. And um, um, like it or not, uh, this workshop is the 11th such uh, conference. And uh, I'm empowered to tell you the next one will be next year in March in Porto Alegre, uh, Brazil. And it will be organized by um, Luis Rocha, uh, Civil Orante, Marcelo Herrera, and uh, another uh, constructor law enthusiast, uh, uh, Jose Vargas. And then uh, my penultimate slide is a summary of uh, these images from uh, my past and uh, the past of uh, many of you. Uh, it is about evolution. Evolution in these images was the uh, First of all, those drawings, many of them were triangular, were tree-shaped. Uh, and the fact that over time, those uh, drawings change. The direction is toward the, the flowing to be more fit. Here I, uh, I make you think of the word, the survival of the fittest. That's thermodynamics. I will uh, touch on that in the afternoon. Uh, design change means the changing of the form. That means morphing. And for that to happen, freedom must be a physical property of the system, which means the object of uh, contemplation. So it's all about the changing form. <clears throat> and uh, in Europe, on the continent, that sort of uh, movie is called uh, animated drawings. In America, it's called cartoons, because early animated drawings uh, uh, in America were uh, made by uh, people uh, cutting with a scissors a piece of cardboard and then moving these uh, 
piece of cardboard and photographing them uh, many, many times. And uh, that, uh, those are the early, you know, let's call prehistoric uh, movies, silent movies. Uh, animated drawings. So uh, drawing is the key word. Drawing means um, uh, on the continent uh, design. And that's why design is a, um, a, uh, a thing that should be familiar to everyone. So at the end of this uh, uh, sequence of uh, drawings, and obviously the principle, uh, the law of physics that justifies uh, not only their occurrence everywhere, which means nature, but um, their usefulness, we ran into uh, statements of this kind from uh, physicists and biologists. This is a, a noted um, TED lecturer from Berkeley who says she is a, um, a, an expert on cancer tumors and how they spread, meaning cancer tumors uh, are my, uh, her cancer tumors are my uh, Danube Delta, okay, or somebody else's uh, human lung. Uh, I, know, I know how to predict those things. She says, we know absolutely nothing about the language and alphabet of form. Well, uh, two things. Uh, uh, you cannot uh, teach uh, an old dog new tricks, meaning uh, you'll never convince uh, scientists who are already convinced that, uh, that the answer is already uh, blowing in the wind, right? Um, but you can teach the next uh, generation and you, that way you can learn uh, things better yourself. So uh, the other thing, which was in the, at the list of my uh, future directions, is to feel free to, uh, not to contradict, but feel free to educate the larger audience, in this case your own students and friends and uh, relatives, that uh, now we know uh, plenty about uh, the, uh, the language and uh, should be the other way around, alphabet and language of, of form. If you have difficulty in uh, educating those people around you, then uh, tell them to buy my books, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Did I speak too much? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Within about two seconds. <laughs> I like this answer better. He said perfect.